If you or someone you know has Parsec on their computer, you can actually just use the web app to connect to them. Uh, it's pretty convenient, although it isn't quite as low latency as the desktop app, but it's definitely usable, and especially good for if you're using it on a machine where you don't have admin privileges. However, if you're planning to host from your Windows computer, or you just plan on connecting a lot, then you can download either a portable or actually just install the Parsec desktop app. You can share your computer with a link or you can add Parsec friends and you can give them different permissions like just gamepad privileges which is on by default and then keyboard and or mouse. So uh, you could give someone, maybe you could give your remote self keyboard and mouse privileges while giving everyone else just gamepad. Well, we're on another section already. I guess that just means Parsec's pretty easy to use. But why would you actually want to use Parsec anyway? Well, it was first and foremost developed for low latency, long distance gaming. But what actually makes it good for that? Well, one, low latency. If you compare it to something like TeamViewer, everything's just so much more responsive especially if you have a good network connection. Speed doesn't necessarily matter, just ping, pretty much. As long as you have at least 15 megabits of download speed, uh, you'll be fine. Next is video quality. The compression looks pretty good and it does support H.265 if both the host and client support it. And so it looks pretty good even with the default 10 megabit upload speed, although you can up that as high as you want. And finally, although I don't use it much, is the community aspect. They have the Parsec Arcade, where someone can host their game and you can connect to their computer and play it. It's basically their whole aim, online local multiplayer. And it can also just be nice if you want to play a Steam game that's multiplayer, but you don't own it, so you use Parsec. All of that together makes Parsec sound really, really good. But normally with something that's so obviously so great, it has some kind of downgrade. What's wrong with Parsec? Honestly, not really anything. It's even free. They do have a paid tier, but the only feature that seems appealing to me is being able to use two monitors at once but you actually have to switch between the monitors instead of just being able to stream to two client monitors from two host monitors. That's not supported, at least yet. So I don't think there's really any reason not to use it. But I mean, we've, we've, I've been telling you about using it this whole time. How about we actually uh, go downstairs and try and use it? Give you a little demo. Let's go. Okay, so I said I would be downstairs. I lied to you. Anyway, we're on Battlefield 5. Why? I've never played it before. But I see that. Is. Oh, yeah, it's not even Parsec. It's just. Oh, it stuttered when I scoped in. <laughs> I'm gonna turn down the video settings. Wow. It's still... Okay, there's no longer stuttering. Oh. Okay. Uh... I don't particularly know what to... This seems like it has gotten... Oh my god, this is... Well, the video quality is actually fine, but it just randomly is stuttering. I don't know whether to blame this on my own network connection, or Evans, or Parsec, or maybe his game just isn't running particularly well. Uh, but there's a higher degree of stuttering than I'm used to. Um, latency is actually shockingly a lot better than I've previously uh, tried. Like it, yes, actually. I want to try a, a very easy to run game to find out if this is Parsec. Okay, and now it's 60 FPS, it just looks bad because it's on 5 megabit. It's on 20 megabit, okay, then it just looks bad. 
Okay, so here is a good example. This is 20 megabit, but it's raining. And you can see a big problem with video compression. Uh, I'll actually, I'll just let Evan play now while I take a look at the visuals until I need to see latency. Tom Scott has a great video on video compression, but basically when there's a lot of just complex moving, moving things, uh, you need a lot more data rate or it's not going to be happy. So right now, despite Parsec normally looking pretty alright, the rain makes it look very not alright and the darkness does not help because typically video encoders pay less resources to dark areas because it's mostly kind of assumed that they're the background or whatever. Okay, so latency. Uh, I can get exact numbers but I will put up the recording, my screen on the left, his on the right, and I'll add the delay that Parsec is actually getting right now. About 38 milliseconds. And the one on the right that is delayed is also what I see, so that I, you'll kind of get a good, uh, a good sense of how I'm playing it. So, the kind of perfect Parsec connection is one machine just having the GPU good enough to decode the video well enough, and a solid network connection, and then on the other side, a solid machine that can actually encode the video while doing work and a solid network connection. I might have said solid network connection before. Anyway, that's how you're going to get perfect performance, but on, if you're, if you for some reason, if you're parsecing into a computer to use like Word or Chrome, you'd basically be able to parsec into whatever's compatible, but if you're using it for gaming, then you need a GPU kind of a step up of what you would normally just to play the game or it's not going to have as many free resources left to encode the video. That's what I have gathered from this. I might be wrong, but anyway, hopefully you did enjoy. And if you did, uh, I politely ask you subscribe as long as you like other videos as well. Anyway, bye. You can watch me press the off button if you want.